Hello. Hi again. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in the last section when we read about Paul's attitude of that he was in a race and that it was only those who reached the finish line that reaped the full reward and how that reflects upon a, a false notion for a lot of people, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, that you're, you can be, your salvation is always in doubt. It's whether you finish and whether you do what you're supposed to do that gets you saved. And that's not the idea Paul has, but, mm -hmm. but it ha does relate to rewards. Mm -hmm. So we, we have said previously, several times really in videos, but especially last time, that the view of salvation that witnesses represent and when they, when they talk to Christians about it, Christians can't believe that you believe this. You believe mm -hmm. you will never have a direct relationship with God or Christ. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be born again to see the kingdom. And you have to work faithfully until the, until the end of your life and way beyond it, a thousand yeah. years, to get ultimate salvation. They can't believe that you would believe that. Yeah. So Christ isn't really your savior. Even for those that believe they're of a heavenly class, he's not really your savior in that, in the sense that Christians believe he's your savior. He pays for your sins. You somehow think he just buys you a ticket, uh, you know, to to make it through. The privilege and of. And then, then prove yourself. Prove yourself, yeah. And and this chapter ten is a, is a building on that idea that now Paul's taking on two tables he's talking about the lord's table he spent he spends chapter 10 and 11 around that subject of the lord's table and the abuse of it but he he doesn't contemplate that you would reject the lord's table now that's another thing that horrifies christians about jehovah's witnesses you you get together ritually once a year to yeah. pass the table by yeah. or to let the table pass you to publicly say you're rejecting it which is a doctrine more like satanism than it is mm -hmm. And therefore paganism. It's more like paganism, where there's an elite class who get certain privileges and the rest of you don't. But when you read this chapter, you realize there's, again, for Paul, one hope. Mm. So let's read the first part of the chapter anyway. He doesn't yet get into the table directly, but he's laying the foundation for that discussion of the Lord's table, right? So, so we'll read from the New World Translation. Yeah, the Silver Sword edition I'm using. So 10, 1 to 10. Now I want you to know, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all got baptized into Moses by means of the cloud and of the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they used to drink from the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock meant the Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, nor they, uh, for they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things became examples for us, in order for us not to desire injurious things as they desired them. Neither become idolaters, as some of them did, just as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, then they got up to have a good time. Neither let us practice sexual immorality, as some of them committed sexual immorality, only to fall, 23,000 of them in one day. Neither let us put Jehovah to the test, as some of them put him to the test, only to perish by the serpents. Neither be murmurers, as some of them murmured, only to perish by the destroyer. Well, before we get to the main point that we set up at the beginning, the two tables, mm -hmm. let's make an incidental reference to what they do with verse 9. They have inserted the tetragrammaton in. Mm -hmm. We must not put Jehovah to the test. Yeah, that's what they have. Well, there's textual support for two translations. One is the ESV. We must not put Christ to the test. But the majority of the old textual variants are Lord, Kyrios. Mm -hmm. So again, you substituted Jehovah for Kyrios without any textual support in the history. Mm -hmm. So you can have different translations based on diff different text traditions, but there's no justification at all for this one. Mm -hmm. That's an important point, but it's not our main point here. Mm -hmm. What about the tables though? Here, 
the rest of this chapter, Paul only contemplates two. There's the table of the Lord, and there's a table of demons. Mm -hmm. Because of your pictures, your technicolor pictures in the Watchtower materials, there is a third table that you have created, which is the table that Isaiah 25 talks about, the table of well-oiled dishes. This, mm -hmm. is your, this is what motivates you to keep moving forward, looking for that literal paradise in the future where you will be able to eat at that table forever. But then you make a metaphor out of that and bring it back into the present. You talk about a spiritual paradise that now exists. And being fed by the faithful and discreet slave. But you, so you're thinking of literature, watchtower literature. You're not thinking of the Lord's Supper, no. the Lord's Table. So you have repudiated the clear teaching of 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 4 here, where it says about that generation that ended up dying in the wilderness, mm -hmm. all were baptized into Moses, all ate the same spiritual food, all drank the same spiritual drink. All of God's people were invited to mm -hmm. partake of the blessings that God was giving his people mm -hmm. before they went into the wilderness, mm -hmm. but they were not willing. So they fell in the wilderness, it points out. Mm -hmm. But they were still God's people, mm -hmm. and their children went into the promised land. Mm -hmm. So you've missed the point. The word all here is emphatic because he's saying all had the same promise, all had the same hope, but they fell nevertheless. Mm -hmm. See, so, you, you can't enter the kingdom of God, though. Let's reiterate that. Christ mm -hmm. says it to a, a, a leader of the Jews. You're a teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things, mm -hmm. that you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Yeah, so this uh, um, this is a leading into the Lord's table, and that that is called Eucharist in the church. So I, I think for I don't know I was a dumb witness I guess because I didn't know what that word meant. I would see it on signs at churches, and the only word I knew that started that way was euchre. <laughs> I didn't play cards. I didn't play euchre anyways, but that's what I thought it was. Something to do with that table. Something to do with that table. So that's how dumb I was. But what does it mean? That Eucharist, yeah. I didn't know that the Lord's Supper was sometimes called the Eucharist because it's talking about, uh, a, well, I don't know the technical. It's, it's the Greek word. F for? Eucharist is, is the Greek term for thankfulness, Okay. thanking. So this is yeah. a celebration, a thankfulness that you have every, well, basically every time you get together, as he said later in chapter 11, yeah. every time we come together and you take the Lord's Supper, you are yeah. thanking God for yeah. everything. Yeah, but especially for what Christ has done. Yeah. So that's why you've got the symbol of the blood and the, and the body. So, uh, you know, when you, when you go back to the time of Moses, people in other other uh, settings, the pagans in the other settings, they also had had uh, ritual sacrifices, ritual sacrifices yes. and things they did, and you know, so they offered sacrifices, but they never did this kind of thing. the The Christians' uh, celebration is is a similar, what would you call it? It's just, it's a similar tradition, but it it's it's Meaning, it's meaning is, is totally different. different. That we believe if we're Christians, we're thanking God for what he has done. We're thanking yeah. Christ for what he has done. Notice yeah. the past tense. But I would say the pagans are thinking that by offering a sacrifice, they're going to get something. Yes. They're making a deal with God. Yeah. And so I, th I think with, with witnesses and Christians, that's a big difference. When, when Christians approach the Lord's Supper, it's with gratitude for grace because they know they can't offer anything. That's right. Nothing in my hands yeah. I bring. Yeah. Simply to your cross I cling. Yeah. Is the whole yeah. the old hymn, right? So but you're with right. Witnesses, that it, you really think you can, you can somehow offer your life, uh, d doing everything that they tell you to do, and that's going to win you something. It's going to give right. you your salvation. So that's closer to the pagan view of what yeah. the ritual is about. And keep that in mind if you're coming from the witness world, that, that that is what you're thinking. You might say, well, it's mixed with true thankfulness. I think it was. In my case, I, yeah. I thought I was giving thanks, but I also knew it was a contract. This is not a relationship that God has already yeah. forged for you. Yeah. You're not adopted. You will be adopted if you're faithful. Yeah. But we also were trained to reject 
the Lord's Supper. We were. So you would, you you know, now it it seems so offensive what we were doing. Mm. Once a year, we were reminded of this. We had our memorial, but it didn't mean a lot to you if you were one of, you know, the ones that thought you were of the great crowd to live on the earth. It didn't have any any. It didn't have that that punch. It didn't have that that meaning in your life. So you didn't think about it all as much as you should, I would say. Uh, and when you did, you didn't think about else. it in the right way. It was for, and it was for somebody else. It That's wasn't right. for you. That's right. So you you were ritually rejecting what God has offered. Yeah, that's the sad truth. Yeah. Uh, this uh, commentary, which we've used before here, Godet, mm -hmm. Frederick Godet's commentary on 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. he makes a very good point here that you might not notice. This is, this is about the fact that in this passage we have the first time the, what we call the sacraments brought together. We have baptism talked about mm -hmm. and then we have the Lord's Supper talked about. Mm -hmm. He says, it has been justly observed that in this passage we find for the first time the combination of the two sacred acts of baptism and the Lord's Supper as forming a complete whole. Mm. That's something you never thought about when you were a witness either. Mm. Your baptism is different too, but you don't think of the Lord's Supper as essential. Yeah. Christians do not think this way. None of them, none of the Big Ten denominations think this way. The one representing the grace of entrance into the new life, Godet says, the other, the grace by which we are maintained and strengthened in it. Mm -hmm. So he thinks it's all about grace. I can't yeah. disagree with him. Yeah. The combination of these two acts under the particular name of sacraments is not therefore an arbitrary invention of dogmatic, he means by that dogmatic theology. When mm -hmm. you hear about sacraments as a witness, you don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. But and they're, and, you know, Protestants even, are talking about two sacraments, those yeah. two, and, and Catholics are talking about seven. Yeah. I mean, we turn everything that everybody else does into ritual. But you have your own rituals. But at least this is this is a ritual of the New Testament Christians. Yes, it was. When they gathered together, they they had the the Lord's table, and it was it was the the linchpin. It was the thing that All that Christians you do. looked forward to yeah. and that you reflected on. It kept your your devotion and your your life centered on what Christ has done for you. Exactly. What's our link? Uh, it's a video called Second Century Christian Worship Focused on Christ's Death and Resurrection and Sunday Eucharist. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See you next time.